Three minutes, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. All three engines up and burning. Two, one, zero, and lift off. The final lift off of it. Hey, 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 how you doing? Hey, big up for TEDx youth at Cala Victoria and uh, for all the team and for you guys. So another round of applause, please. Hey, let's get some energy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Right, so um, I'm Robert Obert. And um, this is my presentation about our narratives. So um, I like to call myself an urban artist and I say urban artist because I've been influenced by the urban scenery a lot and where I do my work is in the urban scenery. And I'm part of the most, let's say, most persistent current in art history at the moment, which is street art. Now, what is street art and graffiti and this whole urban art ensemble and how does it influence society and communities and especially individuals? So. I'm going to try to briefly uh, introduce you into this world and hopefully some raise some more awareness about that and follow the stories behind it because it's about the stories, it's about some evolution in a narrative. You take a look at this short animated sequence over there and it's about you know, some, some stages of evolution of myself of course. So um, how did I end up in here? Um, you know, who am I? What have I done up to now? And what does it all mean to me, especially? So um, I started drawing and I started painting and doing comics and illustration and uh, afterwards painting on walls, large scale murals. And it's all coming down to the beginning, the moment when I started to do things for art. So the beginning of my own narrative, which is when I was about three years old, that's when I started to draw and never stopped since. So I think the key word for this is narrative. It's the way the artist finds to tell the story, to create the script that's going to follow himself and the others, what happens with your own story and what goes back to the public. So I think it's important. So my first contact with narrative in the arts department was comics. So I started to draw, I also was interested in comics, I quickly emerged into that. It was very important to me. But it was in a time when I was growing up that alternative culture was not that, you know, present in Romania. In the early 90s, we didn't have so much, uh, you know, to bring from outside uh, our own space, you know, after the revolution. So, we had to rely on these small clusters of people, small communities, you know, with sharing information, there was a little bootleg material. It was crazy because we didn't have internet, or if we did have internet, it was really poor. And uh, we had to share information from one to another, which was interesting. It was also crazy, you know, you had to go to friends' houses and all sorts of things like that, and, you know, get home magazines and so on. And it was interesting, but we also used like um, other forms of finding information. We didn't have like, you know, the phone at the tip of our fingers. There was no Googling and things like that. So it was interesting to, to discover in a different way. So we used uh, internet cafes to search specific websites and things that were interested, we were interested in, right? And this alternative culture we were interested in was available and was, you know, released. And we discovered it through the help of the hip hop community and the hip hop phenomenon, which was interesting at that time because it brought the culture from the West in here and we started to, you know, reproduce things. I was fascinated. I mean, I saw just, you know, there were bits and pieces all over the city, you know, but very timid, like it was the beginning, you know. You couldn't see like huge murals back in the 90s in Romania. Now we can in the last days, in the last year, sorry. But then it was just, you know, we were just wandering around. We had no idea what was going on, but it, it was massive. It was massive, even though it wasn't that massive here. So, this alternative culture has given us more and more information and it has feeded me 
a lot. Of course, I also had um, other interested, like um, I was interested in more than the alternative culture. I was interested, you know, in reading cinemas and all that. And it was all connected all around me. And um, so I kept on moving forward, right? I had to find out more. I had to know what was going on with the world. I had to find out how the narrative is going to, you know, continue. So I moved on, and it's important to move on in your, in your own narrative, right? And it's important to follow your path. So it was pretty straightforward for me that I was going to, you know, go to an art school, and I went to the arts university, and to follow my dream because it was kind of natural. I almost got into a graffiti crew before that, but it didn't really work out. I was still not into it. I was admiring, I was participating, but not actively, I was not contributing. So I went to the arts university, which is the turning point. So the turning point for me, and the turning point for this narrative is that I went into this uh, academia where it's fascinating, you can learn a lot of things, and you, know, you get information, and not only technique, but how the art world works and what can be used for you and against you, and things like that. But there was this unsettlement inside me, like, you know, I'm still learning new things, but something from the beginning was still haunting me, right? So I began to experiment with things to put in the public space. So the last piece you can see is my very first freehand stencil that I used on the street. It's actually the birth of my stage name, Obert. It was kind of like, you know, deconstruction of myself. But still, I didn't find my narrative. I still didn't see it relevant for the public space. I wasn't, you know, sending out a message. So where's the story? Where the, well, where does it go, you know? So after this, I realized that I have to go back to the very first moment where I got in contact with what the narrative means for visual and arts, which was comics. So here comes the reload, which is creating this comic called The Urban Prophecy. It's not a coincidence, I'm an urban artist, and this is an urban prophecy. I'm not quite the prophet, but who knows, right? And this is a comic book I created specifically as a, as a mirroring of my concerns towards the world and how society is working, how the narrative is written, and present it around me. So basically, what this story says is a reflection of my thoughts, and the setting is dystopian. The protagonist is wandering around, asking questions about essence and consciousness, and in a society where climate has changed, does that seem familiar? And uh, where everything seems to have lost its essence and its meaning, right? So this was actually the trigger to use all the concepts and put them back where they belong, to the public in the urban scenery. So um, I started to use everything that was happening in the comic book universe and put it into the public space. Use the characters, use the concepts, use everything that was connected to that and put it on, on murals and put it on paste ups and, you know, street interventions of all sorts with stickers. I was traveling all around, you know, wherever I could get like this street art intervention kit, a travel kit to intervene in the public space, you know, in all Romania, where I got the chance and, you know, abroad, like Berlin, London and Portugal and Italy and so on, had these bits of pieces of, of this small prophecy of these characters that's coming from somewhere unseen, from this unseen world, this unseen story that rewrites itself for each and every individual. So it is important to me. So I started doing that. So it's very interesting and very intriguing to me as well. So this is what, what happened and this is what was important. Writing this narrative, Street Hat has a great power. Now, there's also controversy in the narrative because art in general has controversy, right? But street art specifically, because it's in the public space and because the public space makes the artist take responsibility for what he puts forth in there. So you have, apart from you know, 
uh, going into galleries or abandoned spaces where things are a bit more exclusive. Public space is public space. The power of the street art and the power of this message is right to the public. It creates a special relation. So my narrative was in contact with this controversy where I had a mural that was covered up at a street art festival because we didn't have the same taste, me and the building owners. So the very first thing was, you know, to get mad and get upset because somebody's trying to, you know, s censor my uh, artwork. But then I realized that there's a new way to react to this. There's, there's a different approach, which is understanding that there's different kind of narratives and different types of reactions to what you do. So the way you handle that as an artist is important. And it's important because that's what you serve to the public back, you know. So it's good, there's other types of reaction. That means that the work you put in the public space is alive and it's communicating something more. It's creating a narrative. So I landed into these narratives, I landed into these controversies and I followed my own path. I started to draw, I started to paint, I started to discover urban art, I started to discover this alternative culture. It fed me. I followed different side narratives and then it began to you know, come back to the surface, which is interesting, it's always important because we live now in um, a world that's very fast, very intriguing, it's full of instant stories on social media and all over around you and it's narratives that belong to people but they don't belong to you, the one that you're looking at. You're, you're looking at the different narratives of other people and you should focus on your own. That's the most important thing because street art, apart from its aesthetics, has this power to um, activate and remind people about these narratives, you know, sending out the messages because it's in, in front of your eyes all the time. It's, actually competing with advertising at some point, you know? It's actually his rival. And you get more messages, you get more things from, from a piece of art. It makes you wonder, makes you think about your very own story. The story that you receive through these walls can communicate with your own story. So I think you should focus on your own narrative, which is very important writing your own life script with your own set of rules, with things in balance with all the others and with society, you know, to avoid extreme behaviors. So this is it. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about and, you know, share a bit of my experience with this and tell you that for me, through this alternative form of artistic expression, I managed to discover my own narrative and make sense of it through this form of art. So I suggest you to try to find your own narratives, you know, write them. Be advised that there's so many distractions all along, but that's not important if you focus on whatever is sensible for your own story. So that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot. Cheers.